enjoyed, I think some of you enjoyed Missouri's <laughs> upset, if you can call it that, over wow. Kentucky. There was there was a lot of concern, a lot of angst in Lexington, Kentucky, after a couple of losses, uh, most recently to UCLA and now this one to Missouri. But uh, now there is great concern. And here, got a good one, very intense so far with Pat Bradley. I'm Paul Sunderland. Sold out, Humphrey Coliseum, number eight, Alabama. And number 21, Mississippi State. You see right there, Mississippi State's defense, that early pressure. They like to get out early. Then end a shot clock, they'll protect the paint. I do like the fact Brandon Miller there, Alabama, forced the issue because you're not going to get many opportunities against Mississippi State. Pocket pick, Shaquille Moore, who's missed a couple of games with an ankle injury, had that stolen away. This is Alabama offense, quick three. Nice rebound taken by Matthews. Mississippi State missed their first seven shots. Nice drop pass inside. Again, a lot of contact. But I mentioned missed their first seven shots. And I know it's very early, but we're tied at five. Mississippi State can withstand some offensive droughts, which they're going to have this year because of the way they play it at the defensive end. Well, there's no doubt what they've been able to do is that right there. Be physical. Get to the free throw line. Uh, I had mentioned before that Mississippi State out of Tolu Smith. He shoots 40% of their free throws at 60%. So for Cameron Matthews to get to the free throw line, DJ Jeffries early to get to the free throw line, you talk about how can Mississippi State generate more points? Free throw line. That's one way they don't make a lot of free throws per game. So that's the highest percentage shot they're going to get. Tolu Smith, 6'11". Redshirt senior, as mentioned, 14-7 and seven last year, fought his way through really nagging foot injuries and also had covid and ready for a big senior season, but got to get better at the free throw line. You mentioned he shoots 40% of theirs. Yeah. He only he gets there seven times, which means they're only shooting about 16 right. on the game. And they're only making 11 per game. Yeah, that, that's an incredible deficit. And, and a lot of that, obviously, is because they're only averaging 65 per possessions per game. So you're not going to get as many opportunities as Alabama does because they're making 18 a game they're getting 75 possessions a game so there's just more opportunity well as we talked about there couldn't have been more of a of a distinct difference in style between these two teams like we talked about between you and me well that that previous possession cam matthews gets the rebound he starts the break gets it to jeffries and then they get to the free throw line so they can get on transition too for an easy quick bucket good defense by alabama horton jr on the floor shot clock that's going to be an offensive foul so we, there's one thing there. Tolu gets it on the block, right? You have 10 eyeballs, 10 Alabama eyeballs watching him. That time, Bama sends the double-team baseline. If you're Mississippi State, if you're moving, if you're a shooter, because now you know, just let's keep moving. You don't have to cut down the middle of the lane, but you interchange above that three-point line, and Tolu's going to find you. Uh, there was really no movement on that side for him. We talk so much, and rightfully so, about the defensive early prowess for Mississippi State. But let's not shortchange Alabama. This is a very long, as you pointed out, long, athletic, very quick team. Alabama can get out and defend as well. Going into that Gonzaga game, they were top 10 in defensive field goal efficiency. So you, you're right. They, they can get out there and defend a lot. Javon Quinterly coming back from ACL surgery. That was in last year's NCAA tournament. He's already back on the floor wearing number five in crimson for the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Right at the front of the rim. That ball, a very, very good attempt by Will McNair Jr. coming over from New Mexico State with his new head coach. Some, boy, they're letting him play. There's some contact around the rim on some shooting opportunities. You're not going to see Javon Quinterly run up the floor too often without knowing the basketball is there. Good job of recovering. At least they got a shot at the rim. Mississippi State earning some extra possessions already with five offensive rebounds. Here comes the steal going the other way. Ryland Griffin lays it up and in. On the floor, they said. That's before the shot. Interesting compared to the other call when they sent uh, Alabama to the free throw line on a ball that looked like it was deflected with no possession. The continuation rule hasn't leaked as much into the NBA as, as it is into the NBA. Well, let's Good take another look Quinterly. at this. No, 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 no. That's on the shot. 
That would be on the shot. That would be on the shot. <laughs> all, all due respect, hey. that would be on the shot. That should have been a three-point play. 13-19 remaining. Heck of a job by Ryland Griffin to go up, get hit, and finish that. This is a very, very deep Alabama team, and they just added to that. Got Dom Welch, who's been bothered by a leg injury, a calf specifically. We might see him for the first time, a transfer from St. Bonaventure. Had a very successful run for the Bonnies. Step outside, long three-point attempt, offensive rebound, long shot, long rebound. Put back up and in. This time by Tyler Stevenson, 6'8 grad, transfer from Southern Miss, first lead for the Bulldogs. That's his game right in that mid-range area. Mississippi State gets 38% of the offensive rebounds out there. Going to hear this cheer an awful lot. Knocked down that time by Brandon Miller. 44% from outside the arc. Too much space. He doesn't need any space. They're going to use him in a lot of actions. Ball screen, pick and pop, down screens, isolation. Made that look like a mid-range jump shot. McNair stepping back. If he answers at the other end, 6'11", 265 pounds out of Philly. They don't have to make a bunch of them. But if they can get to eight... They're going to have a chance. That's going to be an offensive foul. Really good weak side defense. Quinterly thought that number 10, Deshaun Davis, was in the restricted area, but the officials thought otherwise. 12.09 remaining, an incredibly low-scoring affair. Alabama averages 84 points per game. They got eight. We didn't quite see if he was in or out of the circle, but either way, that's a heck of a take. And that is one of the things that Mississippi State defense does is, is they want to force your baseline, and that help is going to come baseline. So a lot of teams to counteract that, they want to stop and pop. Quinterly went a little too far because you want to stop before you get too far in and throw that skip pass to the corner. That was the intention. He didn't finish it. Davis again finding some pace, space. Uh, that's going to be a travel. That's pretty hard work down on the low block by number 13 in White McNair, but uh, certainly took an extra step or more. We will step aside. Alabama has been. The emergence of Jaden Bradley. He's going to have to get more minutes with the injury of uh, Namari Burnett. So he'll have to run a lot of the point guard positions. Big, strong player. He he makes tough shots, Paul. Tough shots. Jaden Bradley out of Rochester, New York, the number one ranked point guard coming out of high school last year. And you mentioned Namari Bennett, Burnett, the 6'4 sophomore out of Chicago, transfer from Texas Tech, out with a wrist injury for four to six weeks. And Nate Oates was telling us he is an outstanding wing per defender. They miss his size. They sure do. And not the same position, obviously, Burnett and Bradley. Uh, however, you know how Coach Oates kind of mix and matches a lot of his backcourt. Shot clock again out to Miller. Look good off the front of the iron. Rebound taken by Jeffries. That's the third time Mississippi State's defense has forced Alabama to an end of shot clock situation. And a reminder, Alabama averages 84 points per game and is number five in terms of tempo in the entire country. Got to get out of the paint. Jeffries looking to attack. Got stripped from behind, but hit on the arm, and uh, it will be a foul called against Alabama. That's going to be a couple of free throws coming to D.J. Jeffries, who got things started out with a couple of free throws when we were just underway. A lot of action in that offense, movement, ball movement side to side, get that Alabama defense moving. I like the fact D.J. Jeffries understands when to catch an attack to the paint. First free throw off the side of the iron. And while we got a moment, uh, what a basketball doubleheader we have for you. Coming up next Wednesday night right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Wendell Green Jr. leads number 13 Auburn against Terry Roberts and Georgia at Stegman Coliseum. That one starts at 6.30 Eastern, 5.30 Central. Then we'll take you to Bud Walton in Fayetteville. Ricky Council, the fourth, and a balanced Razorback attack host Des Moines Hodge and the Tigers of Missouri should be two great games. And <laughs> Boy, are they happy in Columbia, Missouri right now. If you weren't with us earlier on, 
a big win for the Missouri Tigers, just the third ever over Kentucky. It's one of the great wins. What a great season they're having so far. Just that one loss to Kansas. And beat Illinois right beat before Illinois. conference play began. Illinois ranked number 16 at the time. Matthews down the lane, high up off the board, not there. Rebound taken. Nicely done by Miller, number 24 in Crimson. Crowd thought that he got away with a travel. Good block out. Good block out that time by Will McNair, who's given Mississippi State some good minutes. Well, they did a defensive clinic right now. Even Alabama in transition. Mississippi State stopped the ball, get out to the shooters, close that gap, and look at this. Davis gets back out and contests that shot, and you got block out by McNair on the other end. Just well coached. Haven't made many defensive mistakes this half and that's what gets you a two-point lead playing your kind of basketball that's your style mississippi state wants to play scoreboard mississippi state style of play <laughs> win for mississippi state yeah. as well oh. and to the very important point you made about free throws now in the one and the penalty but mississippi state is only three of seven for the free throw line you can't leave that many points out there can't and do miss it. the front end of a one and one I, I don't like the fact that you're missing your free throws. Here's what I do like about that, though, Paul. When you're at the free throw line, Alabama's not running. They're not scoring. They're not in transition. And what you're doing is putting fouls on Alabama. Keep an eye on the foul trouble now, but it's all because Mississippi State has decided as a team we're going to attack the paint. Wouldn't that all be the same if they made the free throws? <laughs> yeah, it would be. <laughs> all positive except for the points, which... I'm a big point guy. I love points. I'd rather, points. If I'm Mississippi State, I'd rather see Alabama taking it out of the basket after a <laughs> yeah, couple of made right, free right. throws. Just inside of 10 minutes remaining. Yep. This is not a technical. Oh, nice rebound taken by Jeffries. Really good all-around player. 10 to 8. How long has it been since Alabama scored? High ball screen. That's coming up way short. Deshaun Davis was flopping, hoping for the foul, and here comes Sears quickly at the other end. Step through, and we'll get to the free throw line. Nice transition basketball by Mark Sears. And one one way to keep a team out of transition is by taking good shots. And you can miss a good shot, but your team is still in position to get back defensively. But if you take a quick, bad shot like that last possession, defense is out of position, and Alabama off to the races. Alabama, like every opponent that Mississippi State has so far played this year, including some really good teams. Beat Minnesota, beat Marquette. I mentioned the loss to Drake to close out the non-conference. But this level of defense against quality opponents is is nothing new. Not since uh, Chris Jans has arrived from New Mexico State. And he does it. He lives it. He preaches it. He teaches it. He breathes it. And if you're going to play, if you want to get minutes on this Mississippi State team, play for Chris Jans, Gonna have to play defense. No ifs, ands, or buts. A guy doesn't matter. So that's how he gets these guys to play defense, because it's a big. It's just what he talks about the majority of the time. Alabama now over four minutes without a field goal. Good high screen. Tolu Smith has been very quiet. Certainly one of the keys. But still, you look at the scoreboard, and we're tied at ten without Tolu Smith, number one in white, doing much. Step back jump shot, and that ends a long drought. A couple of free throws, and now Sears with the triple. Alabama has quick hands. If you're exposing that basketball, they're going to get a deflection. Look at the hands on the ball, and then they're up the floor explosive. Here's Dom Welch for the first time. We thought we might see him. You see that heavily wrapped in bandage calf. Here comes Sears the other way. Step through. Oh, Ooh. nice play. Matthews at the other end saved a basket and saved a possession. Really good play at the other end by Cameron Matthews. It's an incredible effort right there. Got it right at about the last moment that you could get it. He jumped over two guys just to get a piece of that. When we talked to Chris Jans this morning or this afternoon at shoot around, he said, Cameron Matthews is our leader. He's a leader well, vocally, he's... leader in the locker room, and leader with effort. And he's got everything to be a great basketball player. Trying to get Smith going. Couldn't pick it up. That would have been a travel. 
Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Matthews, good patience and couldn't get the finish. Little frustration foul. That's going to be the fifth team foul so far on Matthews and Mississippi State. Already Alabama out of fouls. And what we should talk about is that length of Alabama because they've got it all across the board. And toughness, Sears, smallest guy on the floor for Alabama, about as tough as you're going to find. Uh, so you combine those two things, you see why Alabama's defense is swarming. And it bothers you. Even if you think you got a point blank shot right at the rim, you got hands coming from everywhere. Tyler Stevenson, 6'8 grad out of transfer from Southern Mississippi on the floor now. Right off the front of the iron offensive rebound. Good hard work at the offensive end by Nick Pringle, but it'll go the other way to Mississippi State. And 13 to 10. I would have bet you $10 million <laughs> that it would not be 13 to 10 with 8.05 remaining in the opening half. Well, Alabama is so explosive, though, Paul. It only takes them two, three possessions because they're up the floor. They shoot the three. They attack. And the last three possessions getting it to Tolu Smith and the result wasn't what Mississippi State wanted. Three we, turnovers. We feature Tolu Smith with very good reason. Several possessions trying to get him going. They've turned it over four out of the last four possessions. Right. What can they do to get number one going? I think they've got to continue to do that. Tolu has to understand where the double team's coming. One of those turnovers, he caught it really in no man's land at the free throw line. Probably shouldn't have thrown it to him there. That's a good no call. Tolu Tolu Smith bailed out on the charge. A good no call and uh, Brandon Miller with a basket for Alabama. Another example of when you do break Mississippi State's press, you got to keep attacking because if you pull it back out and let them set up, it's not going to be not going to be fun for you. Shaquille Moore not there. Rebound easily taken by Griffin number 3 in crimson for Alabama. Kick ahead. Good ball movement, wide open three, not close. That time off the iron by Noah Gurley. See if you can't get something early in transition if you Mississippi State. That's a punch. Jamel Horton Jr. out of Queens, New York with a release from the three. That's how you drop a transition three-point shot. Move the ball side to side. Do it. Wow. They're making up the difference in the shot clock. Remember, they went down to single digits early. Now they're shooting it in the high 20s. Again, you break that initial pressure from Mississippi State. you got to hit them quick because once they set up, it's Alabama, difficult. Alabama takes 29 threes per game. Here is Tolu Smith again. That's good aggressive work. And he'll get back to the free throw line where you got to make these if you're Mississippi State. Difference with that, you have Tolu Smith on the wing. I kind of like that, facing up. Because he's got really good ball handling skills, good footwork, obviously great athlete. But so to answer your question, you got to keep going to Tolu. You've got to use what you got in him. Things will start clicking. Averaging 16 points to go along with nine rebounds, third best in the conference so far. Through the non-conference season, here's our next women's basketball doubleheader, and it should as well be another good one tomorrow. Aaliyah Boston and the number one ranked. South Carolina Gamecocks host Texas A&M at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Then it's Haley Frank and the Missouri Tigers. They're taking on Robin Benton, Jada Walker, and Kentucky. Both games are on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Good free throw there, one of four. Back with Pat Bradley. I'm Paul Sunderland. Thanks so much for joining us. Third of game and a triple header. And there have been some interesting ones. Tennessee held off to win at Ole Miss. And then Missouri was all over Kentucky from the beginning. Kentucky got within nine with about 11 minutes to play, and that was it. Now, so Kentucky has gone through stretches where their firepower has had no fire or any power. And when they just didn't have enough to come back from that deficit. Brandon Miller, I thought, could have swung it one more time over the defense, had the opportunity to stretch that Mississippi State defense out. Again, in a very low-scoring affair, Miller leading the way with eight points, three of six, and he's made two of four from outside the arc. He's got an absolutely beautiful stroke. 6.25 remaining in the opening half. Mississippi State's going to switch on that ball screen all day long. Miller off the side of the iron. Good offensive rebound. Wow. 
What a putback that time by Nick Pringle. So that's what Alabama's going to spread out your defense. Spacing. They put up a shot. That means you have a lot of weak side rebounds, especially three-point shot, long rebounds. Davis goes away from the screen. Good rebound again taken by Miller. He averages nine a game, but Alabama turns it over. Reed Jr. with a three. Horton comes off and hits a three. Reed Jr. with a three as well. Uh, their their three, three point shots have come off transition, steal, run, Alabama defense on their heels. Just big, probably unexpected offense. That's another good no call. Pringle back to back dunks. Now, Pringle's a guy who had gone a ton of minutes. Nate Oates told us at shoot around, you may want to see, we're going to see a little bit of him. And he's delivered for his coach. Tremendous activity, length, and stick back ability. Well, that's the thing. Watch out. See how Bama, they shade to its toe loop, right? Now, they hadn't, they didn't commit on the double team, but they're hedging. They're ready. And Tolu sees that their length, what it does is you can't see any passing lanes. That's why you got to move. If you want to get a shot off, Paul, you know this. As a, a shooter, a scorer, you have to move to create a passing lane for your guy to get it to you. Here, spacing all the time. And, and when you see good spacing, it's obvious. Guys are getting open looks. They're causing the defense to rotate and scramble. And you got to know how to move. So Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, everybody talks about great shooters. Those are. You know what those guys know how to do? Move without get the open. basketball. Yep. That means getting open. Smith has another free throw rattle in and out. He's one for five. Interesting. Looking at the stats, you wouldn't think Alabama's taken 13 threes. No surprise there. Mississippi State's taken 10. Uh, that's a credit to Bama's defense not allowing them to get anything easy in the paint. I'm not saying Mississippi State is settling for threes because they've taken, some of them have been good looks, can't make them. Important point in this basketball game, Brandon Miller was called officially for his third personal foul. The officials are over at the table confirming that indeed the foul was on number 24 in Crimson. Brandon Miller, 6'9", 200-pound freshman out of Antioch, Tennessee. One of the top recruits in the country, 21 and 22, the Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Tennessee. Father Darrell played tight end at Alabama way back when in the 90s. It's a nice little connection there. Doug Shouse looked over to us and said, yes, I called it. I called it correctly. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big call. You're talking about the young man who's tied for yeah. number one with K.J. Williams out of LSU for scoring in the entire conference at 19-3 a game and a brilliant rebounder as well. What's been impressive today also is he has been key in breaking that Mississippi State press. Whether he comes up, up the floor, finishes, or he's the swing man on there, but he's good in the middle making decisions as well. And you got to account for him. He's already knocked down a couple of threes right in rhythm, just walking into him after the press was broken. Free throws a huge problem right now for Tolu Smith and Mississippi State just 4 of 12 and a couple of them on the front end of one and ones. That ball lost out of bounds. Javon Quinterly, again, an amazing return. March 18th was injured in Alabama's first round loss in the NCAA tournament. To Notre Dame had surgery just a couple of days later. And the doctors and the strength and conditioning coaches, they just kept moving up the calendar, moving it up. They thought he might be able to play when the SEC... Like now, when conference play started, he was ready on day one. Really a tribute to his work ethic. And he is a creator. One-on-one, -on -one, face up. Lots of contact there. That's Tolu right there. That's what you want from him. He's got good footwork. He's got I mean, good foot. We've got a lot of moves. Maybe sometimes over moves. Kevin McHale, up and under. Uh, but he's so strong, he takes contact so well. But you got to pay it off. you got to pay it off. Look, I know the young man is practicing day in, day out. He's spending hours at the free throw line. But right now, Tolu Smith is 1 for 6 and is a team 4 for 12. And his stroke, Pat, you're known as the shooter. That's it. Evaluate his stroke. <laughs> well, here's, here's that footwork in the post. Face up, spin, two pump fakes. And he could go right over right hand over that left shoulder, comes back of the left shoulder. But with free throws to me, first you gotta get in the gym. Now it's routine. 
maintain the same routine. Three dribbles, spin the ball, deep breath. Wow. Tough, tough for the young man, no question about it. He's doing hard, all the hard work, getting to the free throw line. <laughs> you got to pay it up. And I go, Coach Noel Richards, you say, son, that's like a turnover. He's not going to make those free throws. Well, that's the difference in the score right now. No question about it. The number of points that uh, Mississippi State has left on the board and Quinterly coming right back and burying the long three-pointer. That was deep. What was different in that Sears and Quinterly spread the floor much better than they did the previous possession on that turnover. Jay Quinterly stepped right into it. Four three-pointer on the night. And the biggest lead so far for Alabama, ranked at number eight, 25 to 17. Hi, Archie. Three-pointer on the way. Big surprise there. Keyshawn Murphy, 6'10", redshirt freshman out of Birmingham, Alabama. Mississippi State's averaging three threes per game. Right now they got four. If they can get to eight, I said that would be If they get to eight, nine, they have a chance. Keyshawn Davis looking for back-to-back -back bodies everywhere. A foul is going to be called, I think, on Quinterly. Little guy's never going to call. Little guy's never going to get that call in the paint. Javon, that's an excellent effort, young fella, but you're never going to get. In crimson for Alabama, just picked up his third. Now, let Tolu Smith going to shoot two. So we okay. got some time. Break down his stroke. What do you see in his approach to shoot free throws? So that was two dribbles before he had three with the spin. What I would say is that left, that right elbow. I always teach, keep it as tight to your side as possible because the upper body want as little movement as possible. There's two dribbles again, same thing. You want that as tight as possible, almost robotic. The least amount of upper body movement for you is what you want. Your power comes from your legs, your wrists, triceps, shoulders. But, Paul, what's even more important than that that's a, that's that's Nate Oates offense right there. Attack the paint, get your paint touch, kick out for a, a dunk or a three. What's even more important is in practice, do you have do you have the same practice shot in form as you will in the game? Into Smith again. Nice move around Betty Aku, but couldn't make that at point blank range at the other end, as you talked about. That was Noah Clowney off the good assist from Jaden Bradley. And now you see Alabama's offense now has been able to stretch out that Mississippi State defense. They were driving lanes Alabama has right now they didn't have at the beginning of the game. 2.48 remaining in the opening half. Let me add this about free throw shooting, and, and, and you know this. It could be a lonely place out there in the free throw line. You're there by yourself. Everybody in the building's looking at you. So there's a mental aspect to it as well. Good inbound play. A little bit careless at the defensive end. That's a breakdown you don't see from Mississippi State. Another basket by Clowney, and the lead now is eight. Looked like Alabama's starting to feel a little bit more rhythm and comfort against the swarming defense of Mississippi State. Things are loosening up slightly. That is a wild three, and sometimes the wild man is answered. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we drew it up. Well, Keisha Murphy from what coach says is one of the more comfortable offensive guys. He's still he raw talent, but he is, when it comes to offense, he's the most comfortable guy all, anywhere on the floor scoring. It. Another good attack of the basket on the pass off. Uh, Jaden Bradley, as we talked about, wearing number zero for Alabama out of Rochester, New York, the number one ranked point guard coming in. Yeah, if that's an example of Keyshawn Murphy being comfortable at the offensive <laughs> end, I'd, I'd hate to see what really comfortable looks like. <laughs> well, you know, we, we, we have some guys that are just offensively mind, that the awareness offensively, they've got it. Uh, and then other guys on the defensive end, other guys have both. He's one that is more offensive minded. Both teams out of fouls. No, that's a one and one. Oh, travel. I've got Mississippi State with 17 fouls. Credit Jaden Bradley. He recognized it right away. Both of them, actually. That was a very unusual no call and then call, but Mississippi State will take the added possession. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> if you think he's offensive minded now, <laughs> and he's comfortable. And he's comfortable. <laughs> my, and Mississippi State. They, they need these 
very, very badly. Look well, at that. At his size, 6'10", pick and pop. Defending that, you're not used to a bigger guy that's setting that screen be able to pop right to the three-point line and catch and shoot. There was no hesitation. That's the other thing I like about that. No hesitation. As a matter of fact, when he hit it off the backboard, it was just catch, turn, shoot. Keyshawn Murphy is leading Mississippi State in scoring with nine points in five minutes. 144 left, 29-27. Good response as we come towards halftime for Mississippi State. First free throw up and good for Sears. Looks like even that free throw shot guys weren't sure if it was one or two. The officials, the officials were a, a, a little confused on the previous play. Both free throws perfect for Sears, and the lead is back up to four at 31 to 27. So the three-point line now has been the difference with Mississippi State. The free throw line hasn't helped them. Free throw line has killed them. It, it the three-point line so far has saved them. Well, they, they got more threes than Alabama. They, they're one off their season average. They shoot 43% from the three-point line. Good cut by Jeffries. McNair trying to step inside and another traveling violation. Wipe away the basket. Pretty good defense by Charles Bediaco holding his ground. Well, I wonder if DJ Jeffries gets to the SEC logo and essentially turns around 180 degrees to kick it back out to one of his guys. And DJ has been aggressive early in this game. Got to the free throw line. Yeah, you wonder if a little stop and pop. Remember the old stop and pop move we saw back in the day? He is very capable. Probably the best all-around weapon, both uh, driving it and shooting it from the outside is zero in white, D.J. Jeffries. Bradley. Oh, God, nice rebound. There's some of the versatility and talent. That's it. Now he's running the break, surveying the court. Oh, trying to throw that down and no foul called. Talk about an aggressive take. Well, and Bradley's going to be fouled at the other end. That's a big four-point, potentially five-point switch right before halftime. I like the aggressiveness, but remember Absolutely. stop and pop? Remember stop and pop? <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, if I could if I could do anything to look like that, I would too love that aggressive. thought he was going to get the call. But you see the strength of Jaden Bradley. Gets it. Straight to the rim, no hesitation of where I'm going. I'm putting pressure on the defense. Gets hit, plays through contact. At 18 in the losing effort in Birmingham against uh, Drew Timmy mm. and Gonzaga. I guess it was the UConn game maybe where he has just, just see him emerging. Well, he is a superior talent once again. Part of the number three ranked recruiting class in the can have reactions from coaches and players. Once again, with Pat Bradley, our wonderful ESPN crew. I'm Paul Sunderland here in Starkville, Mississippi. 40 seconds remaining in a very hotly contested first half. Talk about getting comfortable offensively. Well, Davis attacking. Good rotation oh, defense. Hands. Really nice play. Good hands by Pringle. Uh, he was mid-air, ready to block a shot, and then last minute changed to put his hand in the pass on the... I didn't think that was physically possible from a human being. I was just, He's comfortable. That was the most... Uh, one of the best defensive plays I've seen. Shot clock winding down. We talked about the comfort level from Alabama against this defense. They've made six of their last eight shots. And Bradley's been orchestrating most of it, but that is a careless turnover. Not a live ball turnover, mind you, so not, not lethal, if you will, but 1.6 seconds remaining. Good point. And I was just to commend, I was going to commend Jaden of how he's been able to weave his way around Mississippi State's defenders, but that 2-3 zone, the length, I mean, they close up just about, if you get through one lane, one set of defenders, Good luck getting through the rest of them. As tough it is, as it has been for Alabama to score, this is the most points that Mississippi State has allowed in a first half so far on the year. Looking for Jeffries. Got to get it in. Jeffries with some space. Step back jumper. Three-pointer on the way and good. The three-pointer. Who would have thought this? The three-pointer is keeping Mississippi State in the game against number eight, Alabama. The team that averages six, Paul, to keep up that type of shooting. Uh, so they're going to have to make their free throws and, and continue to play tough at the rim to stay in this game. Mississippi State, 7 of 15 from three-point range, 
The big story, 5 of 16 from the free throw line. So shooting 15 points better from the three-point line than from 15 feet away. It's not supposed to be like that. Uh, it, but it, if, better, it better not continue if right. you're Mississippi State. Well, you, you, you know that hopefully the averages will play out. Oh, they called a blocking foul. It's been physical down in the lane, and you talked about the length of Alabama. They are, you know, we talked about the defense of Mississippi State with very good reason, but this is a long team. Bediaco, Miller playing with three personal fouls, Clowney among others. So I, I think Alabama is okay with saying we're going to foul Tolu Smith. He draws five fouls per game. He's got six already. Seven. That's his seventh of the game, inside out three point. So I was going to say, one of the significance, other than DJ Jeffries making that three at the end of the half, was to get him going, right? Brandon Miller wearing number 24 on the left side of your screen, one of the top freshmen in the country. Tied for the lead in the SEC, scoring 19-3, a game playing with three personal fouls, as is Javon Quinterly. And no doubt that played into some of the end of the second half, uh, first half, though, him. Bradley on the Euro step. Boy, that's a good finish. And you talked about how strong he was as a freshman. Strong, poised to be able to keep that awareness, keep your focus on the rim. Boy, there's no question about where they're going, and that's going to be a turnover. Or did they get a foul on Betty Ako? Yeah, they got Betty Ako, number 24 for Alabama, excuse me, number 14 for Alabama, reaching in. So you'll also see, again, those active hands. And right there, Noah Clowney reaches, digs down, and you see Brandon Miller right there, right? He's waiting. Okay, too far for him to go. Now it's one-on-one, -on -one. but there's Jaden Bradley. Boy, it was, it was absolutely yep. cleared out that time for Tolu Smith. He got to finish that. Nice, strong play again, but off the side of the iron. That missed by Bradley, and long rebound. Comes out to Alabama's Sears for the reset. Shot clock, remember, starts at 20. It doesn't go all the way back. Mismatch here on the outside. Tolu Smith working against Sears. Nice step through, but a better steal. That time taken by Davis. Deshaun Davis, number 10. Here's Tolu Smith. That ball swatted away. Nice play by Clowney. And an offensive foul. Wild start to the second half. It really is. DJ Jeffries stepped right into a, a three he had just made from that position. And so that's one of that's a scouting report charge taken right there because DJ loves that quick left-handed burst first step. Played it on him as his left hand that time. Jeffries now, after that spectacular three, working towards a double-double, eight points, ten rebounds. Well, Bradley showing some good patience and setting up a teammate. That is a nice play into the corner how to Clowney. Make, how do you make it look that easy? Really I mean, easy. Just, it, it just, Jaden Bradley, just the time slowed down for him in that play, making every correct decision. A little Nikola Jokic impersonation. Yeah. Good attack of the basket that time by Cameron Matthews. 6'7", 225-pound junior. Played 33 games last year. Made 10 starts when Tolu Smith was bothered by... Talked about that foot injury that hampered Smith all of last year along with a bout of COVID. Bediaku now picked up... Bediaku picked up his fourth personal foul like to see Cameron Matthews get back aggressive again. He was at the beginning of the first half. With Alabama, they can play. Not a lot of teams have the kind of length in their depth that Alabama has, so they can they can battle through foul trouble. Uh, the emergence of Pringle, they've Gurley, Clowney, Betty Ako, obviously. And just as you mentioned, and I think rightly so, Pringle comes back on. Remember, he had a couple of put-back dunks. He was very active in the first 20 minutes. Didn't play many, but he had an impact on the game. 39-35 just underway here in the second half. Interesting, when Chris Jans took over after a very good run at New Mexico State, had to really massage this lineup. And Tolu Smith was the first one that committed to coming back. DJ Jeffries was in the portal. portal. Shaquille Moore was in the portal. They decided to stay. Three-pointer is going to be well short. Battle for it. Rebound is taken once again by an active Nick Pringle. 
And, and remember, a big part of Mississippi State's offense is actually their offensive rebounding. Got to be careful here now if you're Mississippi State. They're starting to feel some comfort, comfort and some rhythm in the offense ears with a triple. Well, in, in that tem tempo is Alabama's right now. Boy, Tolu Smith is taking a lot of contact down inside and working so hard. <laughs> it's, it, it, you don't realize it, but Alabama's length in their active hands, even if they're not blocking a shot, you see those hands out of the corner of your eye, and it affects a point-blank shot. And if you can't block it, well, we're willing to foul and send Mississippi State to the free throw line. Is Alabama doing a really good job, not only with their length, but with some strength as well, by playing Tolu Smith one-on-one, -on -one, but making him look out of the corner of his yeah. eye for a shot blocker coming from the weak side? Thinking, who's coming? Is anybody coming? Now, Somebody's coming. Now I'm trying to make my move. And, and Alabama's length is so great, they cover so much space quickly. So with the last minute they're there, to deflect or, or get up and affect the shot. Noah Gurley coming on now to replace Pringle. And remember, adding to the lineup, Dom Welch, the six foot five, two slash three out of St. Bonaventure, is getting his first action for a very deep and talented Alabama team coming in at 10 and two and number eight in the country. Both free throws missed. And contact at the other end. Tolu Smith may be a little bit of a fatigue foul. He has had to work yeah. so hard. Usually he works so hard at the defensive end, which he does, but he's expending a lot of energy at the other end. Just didn't have any lift there to challenge Clowney. It, it throwing so many different guys at him. And like you said, it's sometimes trapped, sometimes not. Get in your head. But the luxury of having a point guard like Jaden Bradley, to handle Missis we're talking Mississippi State's full court press and make the right decision as a freshman. Yeah, this is a good sub. I think uh, Coach Jan saw exactly the same thing. Going to give Tolu Smith a little bit of a blow and bring in Will McNair Jr. wearing number 13 for Mississippi State, who played some good minutes in the first half. At the break, it was Alabama leading at 34-30. Remember, Mississippi State led 25-20, but then put on a little bit of a shooting display with... Uh, Keyshawn Murphy and then DJ Jeffries to get it just to a four-point advantage at the break. Tennessee has already won this evening at Ole Miss. And Missouri hammered Kentucky. Timeout. That's good play by Bradley. Mature beyond his years. No wonder he was rated the top point guard coming out and he's got an interesting last name. Mississippi State's getting who's getting them who's taking them where they're taking them from uh, and and they've really done an excellent job in this first period uh, last oh for five Mississippi State in their last last shots and they're sending a lot of bodies a lot of this depth at Tolu Smith and physically and with the troubles at the free throw line it has been a very tough evening so far for number one in white for Mississippi State He's only got two points so far on the game. He averages 16. And ironically, those points have come from the free throw line where he's 2 of 12. And, and you look here, you're... Matthews. Love that action. Yeah, good attack. And back to the free throw line goes Mississippi State. Matthews going to take a moment getting up. What a magnificent athlete, number four in white. We'll have a couple of all the new coaches in the conference and one of the very best in college basketball when we have a moment as Matthews will go to the free throw line 44 to 35 efficient for Alabama in the second half three of six two of three from outside the arc and there is a lid on the basket <laughs> mm. when Mississippi State goes to the free throw line they're starting one of six you feel for coach Jans because you talk it preach it but how do you game plan for the lack of free throw shooting Save for that phase of the game, or which there are several phases, offense, defense, transition, turnovers, free throw line, three-point shooting. Other than that phase of the game, they have been either right there or yeah. better than Alabama, the number eight team in the country. Miller stepping wow. inside, tough finish. Uh, that is great ball movement. Tight curl. Brandon Miller, there's very little space. T 
tight curl catch. Acrobatic finish, creative. Three players now in double figures for Alabama. Miller with 10 on four of eight shooting. He has been incredibly efficient. A foul is called down inside on the double team. That's probably going to go against Noah Clowney based on his reaction. Number 15 for Alabama. So the lack of a lot of double team on Tolu Smith, they turn around and trap Will McNair, who I think a lot of it may be opportunity. Didn't see anybody on his side. Let's send somebody, surprise him with that pressure. But look at these bodies coming back. Pringle comes back on. Clowney goes to the sidelines. A really, really deep Alabama team. Deep. Talking to some of the folks that do their radio, this is the most talented team they've seen in over 20 years. We'll see how it plays out as the season goes along. Nice response by Deshaun Davis. That's all predicated on Keyshawn Murphy, who's got a great feel for the offensive end, feels the double team from the baseline, knows exactly who's going to be open. Great swing pass to the corner. Murphy's three-point shooting in the opening half certainly helped to keep Mississippi State in contact with okay. Alabama. At 10-2 and two on the season, Mississippi State at 11-1. and one. Are we watching an answer to Mississippi State's offense right here in front of our eyes? Really good ball movement. Wide open three out of the corner by Dom Welch making his first appearance. So Keyshawn Murphy right there. They know he just made three threes, but reads that <laughs> double team coming, makes the right pass. Result, good pass, good shot, made shot. Well, Keyshawn Murphy, as you talk, good entrance and a nice recovery. DJ Jeffries just saved a basket, <laughs> yeah. just saved a basket. But to finish the thought on Murphy, no question he is, as we talked about and had a little fun with how comfortable and confident he was at the offensive end. But this is a hard scheme for him to really pick up on defensively. But as the season goes along, you can't teach what he just did with that skip pass. That's just really good instinct. There's no question about it. And, yes, as he continues to learn what Chris Jans wants defensively, because there's a lot going on. Is the full court press, the half court trap, 1-3-1, one, one, man to man stuff, half court zone. So there's tons of stuff. But a kid who has the offensive awareness as like he does, you'll you be patient with him. I, I, <laughs> this certain from guys, what you, I've seen. This, hey, there's certain guys you could be patient with on defense. He's probably he's one of them. Free throws up and good for Pringle. Good free throw shooter. Excuse me, good from the floor, not so good from the free throw line. 48 to 37 now, the largest lead for Alabama. And it's important for the young guys, like Pringle, get on the free throw line, on the road, hostile crowd. Those are the things that help you grow up and mature quickly. And speaking of the crowd, this mini run to start the second half by Alabama has taken the sellout crowd out of this game, at least for the moment. And the hump was rocking. It was. It was. McNair picked up his dribble with nowhere to go. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Not so much now. Little step back, rattles in and out. Nice rebound taken by Bradley. Nine points, four rebounds, four assists for the freshman point guard. Four assists. Throwing it up, throwing it down, and a much-needed timeout called by Mississippi State. Alabama on a run, now leading by 13. He, he sees the play developing before two. To put that on a guy who hadn't been in that position, Murphy, against a, 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 a game like this, against number eight Alabama team, it's got a really good defense. Alabama on 11-2 run, 13-30 remaining in this one. Although I did like that action with Cam Matthews at the top of the key, let him attack. A triple team now. Somebody got to be open. Tolu Smith steps through, and we'll get to the free throw line. If that was me, if we see that replay, I think it might have been, I don't know if it was Shaq Moore or Horton Jr. There's an opening right there at the top of the key. Now you've got to slide to your left, and that's the open lane for Tolu. I believe it was Shaq Moore. Yeah, away from Sears. Sears had dropped down, dropped down. He didn't get to the right space. And, and, you know, those are the little things that you learn how to create that open passing lane. A little bit of a Bronx cheer for Tolu Smith, although everybody in this building. Well, there's some Alabama fans. It's not that far some. away. I saw some in the hotel, too. Yeah, they're pulling for Tolu Smith, and he needs all the help. Three little, for 13 from the free throw line. A rowdy last night. You, I think you slept through it all, I but did. there was a power I outage did. going on. There was a lot going on in the hotel. They ran out of coffee. 
Couldn't believe Ran it. Ran out of coffee. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Talk about a nightmare You're situation. You're never st- staying there again. <laughs> Javon Quinterly back on, wearing number five for Alabama. Kick outside to Welsh, not there. Good rebound in traffic. And Good, what, strong rebound. Welsh is the shooter transfer from St. Bonaventure, playing his first game. Another addition, just the yeah. incredible depth. Um, and, and to add to what Alabama can do, Javon Quinterly, the kind of, he's a you, difficult to stay in front of him, if impossible, decision maker. Sears, another good guy, ball. It's just what, what separates Alabama is their ability to break you down off the dribble. They've got multiple guys. When things break down, given the ball, we'll create something. You know, usually if you get into the bonus with 13.05 remaining in a game, that's a real advantage. That's a way to creep back in without the clock moving, but once again, missing the front end of a one-on-one. That's been the story of the game. Alabama hanging in, using their depth, guarding Tolu Smith one-on-one for the most part. Turnover here. Coming the other way is Matthews. Swing that good. Oh, that's double dribble. Yeah, no question. No question. Tolu Smith arguing that it had been deflected by an opponent, but uh, I think right in front of us, and there was no way. That's clearly a turnover. And and you see him maybe speed up a little bit too much there? Didn't take his time? yep. And... Kind of got a little bit ahead of it. Cam Matthews, good job. Get it to him. This Quinterly, though, right in his eyesight. Now, I like you got Murphy, same side with Tolu. That should be a difficult action to guard right there. Tolu Smith, once again, really struggling on the night. Looking for his first field goal, averaging 16 points on the year. Replaced by McNair Jr. wearing number 13. 12-point advantage and a lifetime left in this game. The way Mississippi State can play defense, yes, exactly. They can lock you down five possessions in a row. They're that good. And you, to come back, you either got to be able to shut off, shut off the water, which their defense is good enough for that. Well, step through wild play. The officials look at one another. Ball deflected out of bounds by Keyshawn Murphy. Look, the, people are going to get sick and tired of hearing it, but the story of the game, that's our job. The story of the game is the story of the game. Eight of 25 from the free throw line. Eight makes on 25 attempts. Alabama has 10 makes from the free throw line on 12 attempts. Eight for 25 from the line. And story I, of the game. I, I do think going into this, Coach Oates knew if we're going to give them something, we're going to foul them, make them earn it from the free throw line. Well, as evidenced by the fact that they are very early. I mean, look, Nate Oates is an outstanding college basketball coach, as evidenced by what he's done at Alabama, already a regular season title and an SEC championship coach of the year in 2021. And his team plays defense. But when you have a game plan and it's OK, go ahead and hit them. Right. I'm not talking about anything dirty now. We're just talking about basketball and good strategy and game planning. And it's a credit Mississippi State. They're getting the ball to the rim. Where do you want to have it? High percentage shots at the rim. Well, Mississippi State was able to string together some threes. And that one came up well short. Matthews had it momentarily off the head of number three, Ryland Griffin. So it will be Mississippi State's basketball. When we come back, Alabama at number eight, ten and two on the year on top of Mississippi State by New Mexico State last year knocks off UConn. One of the best teams in the country this year, yep. that UConn. Ranked number two. And then uh, he has a nice meeting with uh, the Hogs and Eric Musselman in the second round. <laughs> Season ended there, and two days later, two days after losing to Arkansas in the NCAA tournament, Coach Jans was here in Starkville. So Mississippi State had their, their eye on the prize. And his style is one that they're familiar here at Mississippi State. Long, defensive-oriented, physical yeah, it's going to be a turnover. Good on-ball yeah. defense that time People by Brandon Miller, who has not committed a foul in the second half. And, and they don't give Brandon Miller enough re- re- credit for his defense. Really good defense, but a really good shot blocker at his position. It's easy. We all fall in love with the offensive side of it, but yep. the kid rebounds, you block shots, and the offense speaks for itself. 
currently listed number three on the uh, draft projection coming out after his one and only year, most likely at Alabama. Got to have this. Running three on two. Horton Jr., and that's going to be an offensive foul. That's a turnover. You got an advantage, and you come up with nothing. Again, the little stop and pop. We used to call it a blowout shot. It's a little seven-foot stop right there. Go straight up. Yep. Brandon Miller, understanding, three fouls. Come into my web, said the spider to the fly. <laughs> now that's an old Larry Bird right there. 13 turnovers now for Mississippi State. And one other thought on Brandon Miller. When Chris Jans says that I love his demeanor, he's great with his teammates, mm. he's always smiling, he makes his teammates better. Kick ahead to Davis and lays it up and in. Now be careful. That's back to back turnovers yep. by Alabama. Get this crowd into it, get that press rolling. Clowney, step back, jump shot, battle for it. Long rebound comes out to Jeffries. Feels like a really important possession in this game. On the way. Boy, that would have brought the crowd off its feet. Matthews couldn't corral the rebound, and here comes Miller out of the backcourt. You mentioned rebounding. Tied for third with the most rebounds in the league. That is a big, big switch of possession, knocking down a three out of the corner. And, and he had a number of passes he could make. He made the perfect pass to Javon Quinterly in the corner for a wide open three. So good to see Quinterly back healthy. In down deep, off the back of the iron. No, did not use the backboard. McNair with the basket. He's played well off the bench when they needed it because Tolu Smith has been really struggling on the night. Miller, unselfish play. Boy, quick off the floor once again. That's three dunks in the game for Pringle. Well, what was he so impressive about that is Mississippi State scores on the other end. Alabama still make or miss. They're, 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 they're coming back with Mississippi State on their heels. Brandon Miller turns down a three. When have you ever seen that to improve his position and get it to Pringle for the and one? Well, the old-fashioned three. Turns down the new school for the old-fashioned three. A perfect example of what Coach Jans from Mississippi State was saying about Brandon Miller. And a lot of it was about how he... he, he Deals interacting with his teammates, celebrates with his teammates, mm -hmm. never is seen on video any sort of negative body language. And everybody knows who he is and what his future is going to be in, in terms of the next 12 months, what's going to happen to him. Well, listen, when you're that good, it's fun. It should be. It should be it's fun when you're that be. good. Especially in college because it's become a business for him very soon. That's There's right. Matthews fouled on the perimeter, and Alabama has been out of fouls for a while. That is their eighth team foul. 9.57 remaining. At the half, it was Alabama 34 to 30. Mississippi State was in the game after 7 of 15 shooting from outside the arc. Now they're out of the game because they're really struggling at the free throw line. 8 of 25. Didn't they call it the charity strike? No, yeah, right. The free throw. Nothing free about those. Nothing free. You got to earn them. And well, they have earned they them. They have earned them. I like where they had, where Coach Jans had Cam Matthews in that action. So you, you can see, though, Mississippi State is starting to understand. We got Tolu, throw him on the block, right? He's consistent. Cameron Matthews, play him top of the key free throw line. He could turn and face DJ Jeffries, has his own action. Three plays on one side coming off the screen. Shaquille Moore getting healthy after missing a couple of games with an ankle. I like what Deshaun Davis is going to do. He gets a little more comfortable after transferring in from Oregon State. He led the, led the Pac-12 in assists last year. This team's going to win some games in a very tough conference. Here comes Miller. Off the back of the iron and Tolu Smith back on. Plenty of time left in this one for a run for Mississippi State. Smith down inside. And for a change, Alabama got lost on number one. That's exactly right. Good job sprinting up the floor. Crowd back in it, and remarkably, that is his first basket of the game. It was his easiest, too. It was. It was. He could use a few more of those. Arguably, their best offense, Mississippi State, is this right here. Defend. Get Moore. an open look. More little shake, throws it up and in, and the crowd is right back in it. But got to watch out for Alabama coming quickly the other way. Defense! 
Gurley has it tipped away. Here comes Davis. Huge play. Yeah, that's tough. Huge play on the run out. The roof was about to come off this place. Now, the big fellas got great, strong, big hands. However, you throw it to him in that position, and that's just great swarming. Came Matt, talk about good hands, good instincts, but you throw it to the big fella. See, the thing is, Sears and Quinterly are already at his knees, yeah, Paul. Yeah, he, yeah. he puts it down one time, you might as well put it in the bread basket. That was taking a big risk. You got you to know who you're throwing it to in spite of the fact that he may be somewhat open. Can't fault the pass. Can't fault Tolu Smith. Just better defense in transition for Alabama. But a big missed opportunity. Miller, nobody around. Throws in a three. Boy, the game is easy. Miller now with 13, three of six from distance. And the ability to shoot it with ease quickly. Oh, that, that was NBA range and then some. Here's more. They're going to take a look at that. I thought I saw maybe. Yeah, that was high. Agree with you, Pat. Didn't mean to interrupt, but, but yeah. Shaquille Moore's elbow was high. completely a basketball play. Inadvertent right. contact. And Sears fouled him with his face. Hey, I'm good with no video. Right there. Credits Mark Sears. Took it like a stayed in somewhat defensive position, making it difficult. Free throw up and good. Now six of ten so far on the year is more. Again, missed a couple of games. Injured an ankle against uh, Jackson State. Six one grad out of North Car junior, I should say, out of North Carolina State. Chris Chance told us we got to piece it together yep. when we're talking about scoring. And and you see with Alabama, much different team. One trip down the floor. You got Brandon Miller could knock down back to back threes. High dribble. That's too easy. Really easy at the other end. Noah Clowney off the nice delivery from Jaden Bradley. And, and he can play under control at a high rate of speed and still make the correct pass. Tolu Smith had done the early work. That was a bad pass. Yeah. Should have been to his left hand a little lower. Bradley again. Threw it away. Open on the left side. That's a good look. Jeffries for three. Boy, Alabama. Fifth fastest pace. Davis absolutely mugged. Mark Sears that time knocks him to the floor. Nothing dirty about the play. It was just very aggressive offense and defense in response by Mark Spears. How good Brandon Miller was. But even Nate Oates didn't know that he was this efficient a shot maker. Well, to add to that, those three guys are also giving you 10 assists. And hold on now, 20 of the team's rebounds. Wow. wow. And and, and the, so it's, yeah, we, we see them score and make plays but distribute and rebound is just as important yeah i was digging into the numbers not as fast as you were but Jaden bradley well <laughs> five assists three rebounds playing really hard at both ends of the floor sears giving good minutes as well in Al and mississippi state has time for about two more runs close this out but then they they allow bama to creep back in well, that was a good possession. That was a good shot by Davis. Pulled up, as you say, a little pull and pop. Just came up a little bit short. Look at the answer at the other end. You miss a good shot at one end, and then Alabama really makes you pay. And now the lead is at 15, the largest of the night. Well, and when they start making threes, right now they're at their average nine. You, they're gonna, you have to go out and guard that. So now you're stretching out Mississippi State's great defense, which likes to keep it packed. It opens up the drives. Three-pointer off the back of the iron and quickly to the rebound is number 15, Clowney. Remember, the three-point shot was really, really beneficial and important for Mississippi State. They made 7 of 15 in the first half. Second half, they're 1 for 5. Oh, that's a nice pass. Tough catch. Very close range. Matthews looking to attack, lays it up and in, and a blocking foul in the restricted area. So it's going to be a chance for a three-point play. 6.26 remaining, and the lead for Alabama is 13. 
D.J. Jeffries is a hard driver to the hoop. He uses his left hand so well to finish, to attack with that left hand. Great athlete, plays through contact. And with him, he has his spurts where he is just the most electric guy on the floor. And, and you want him to have to stay aggressive. Keep that throughout the game. You don't have to shoot every time, but you got to have the mentality of I'm ready to go at you at any point in time. Always be a weapon and make your teammates better. Jeffries with 10 points to go along with 15 rebounds so far on the night. Two of four so far at the line. And he is, his rebounds are above the rim. I mean, they're... Completes the three-point play. We were talking about it during the break, Pat, and you thought that Mississippi State has two runs in them. What they got to do is make a little bit of a run here at the defensive end. They got to shut Alabama out. They got to go over if you're Alabama for the next three or four possessions in order for Mississippi State to get back in. Well, Miss, the, the defense is that good. They, they can turn off the water on you for about five possessions in a row. They've got that ability. Eric Just, Reed Jr. wearing number 11 in white on now for Mississippi State. Long three pointer, oh. good again. Wow. Uh, and Tolu Smith flowing. gave him some room, but not that much. When the water is flowing out of Brandon Miller's wow. shooting hand, I don't know how, how many times you're going to be able to shut that off. Four of seven from three-point range. Miller leading the way for Alabama with 16. Look at all the help down in the paint. Nice little drop pass dug out by Matthews. Off the side of the iron, Tolu Smith is working so and hard. It's it's not a hard trap, but they're there. And there was a defender on the baseline reading that Tolu Smith. Fake to the right. Good footwork comes back to his left hand quite often. That's another scout and report defensive win right there. Yeah, the defensive scheme for Alabama has been superb against Tolu Smith. Could credit these guys for carrying it out. You know, every coach has got a great, great plan. This, these guys execute. Scrambling and somehow coming up with it. Good attack of the basket that time by Jaden Bradley coming out of the scrum. And going back to that Brandon Miller three, Tolu Smith's out there guarding him. Tolu, obviously, not doesn't guard the perimeter as much. There's a lot to ask Brandon Miller, but what Brandon Miller was able to do was just put him to sleep, slowly rock him to sleep. Then steps right into his three-point shot. And he's 28 feet out. I'd be sleeping, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you fall asleep. That's what happens. Wow, well, with a player as gifted as number 24 for Alabama is going over to talk to his coach, Nate Oates. What's he saying? Thank you. Thank you for choosing Alabama. First free throw is perfect. Here's our next women's basketball doubleheader, and it should be a good one, as always in the SEC. Mark, Aaliyah Boston, a number one South Carolina, hosts Texas A&M at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Then it's Haley Frank and the Missouri Tigers taking on Robin Benton, Jada Walker, and Kentucky. Both games are here on the SEC Network. ESPN app, South Carolina, the cream of the crop once again in women's college basketball. What a job Don Staley has done for a long, long time, including winning another gold medal for the United States at the Tokyo Olympics. A lot of jewelry in Columbia. Good attack. Nice pass. Oh, and a block from the weak side, but some contact. That's the length we were talking about and the ability to get off the floor and get off the floor fast. Right. That, so Kim Matthews has made some great attack moves and not hesitate. I think that's so important. Davis gets in Side that three-point line, which creates an open passing lane. But I like Cam Matthews. He puts it down the second time we've seen him. Got to the three-throw line first time. Makes a nice pass to McNair there. Good on the first to two for Tolu Smith. We know how competitive Cam Matthews is. He's going to fight until, until that last buzzer. The leader of this team, as Chris Jans talked about, he said that nobody was more upset than Cam Matthews after the loss to close out the non-conference at Drake. 58-52, there he is, number four in white. Head of the snake on this uh, half-court trap. State champion, he and DJ Jeffries on the same state yeah. championship. Gurley's been pretty quiet tonight. He is an explosive player. Kind of surprised when Brandon Miller misses an open three. Nice step through by Deshaun Davis, and miss came up dry. 
Four minutes and 30 seconds remaining, and it is now a comfortable 15-point advantage after it was a four-point game at the half. Really strong second 20 minutes so far, second 16 minutes for Alabama. That ball deflected out of bounds, and it's going to go to Mississippi State. Looking at the second-half numbers, Alabama shoot 46% from the floor. 40% from three-point range, 8 of 9 from the free-throw line. Very, very efficient second half for Alabama. Ranked number 8 in the country at 10 and 2. Their only losses to Gonzaga and a number 2 UConn. In, in the advantage of having multiple ball handlers, guys who have played the point guard position in this situation, a bunch of guys can handle pressure, going to make the good decision, you hope. But you get to the free-throw line, make free throws at the end of the game. And Brandon Miller looks pretty comfortable with the ball in his hands as well. Right. He's in another guard that can be a point guard. More hesitation. Tough chance. Offensive rebound taken. Nice work by McNair. He'll get to the free throw line. We'll step aside as this one winds down. SEC. Youth. Explosiveness. Similar to Arkansas. Explosive young players, explosive freshmen that can score, but they're also defensive minded. Eric Musselman is going to do that. And then, you know, Kentucky, you knew they were going to have some issues scoring, and we saw a few of their, their last games against UCLA. They lose yeah. tonight against Missouri. Um, but, but then you look at, like, I look at this Mississippi State team with Chris Jans. Clearly, what they do, you know, they're going to defend. So they have something. That they can take into every game, Mississippi State, and say, we have a chance to win this game. And so right now you look here, okay, it's 14-point game. Again, because of their defense, they do elite. And Christian's an elite defensive coach. Gives them a chance at all times. You make some shots. I know we got to keep harping on free throws. But if you're Mississippi State, you have to look at that and say, guys, you know, we make half of them. Right. It's a different. We're in a different situation. So still 334 left. Um, you know, a few things happen here and there. Turnovers, easy buckets. Get some here. Make a few threes. Get back in this. And it's a different situation and a different equation if you make your share of free throws because all of a sudden you're in the game as you've earned a chance to be in the game and all of a sudden Alabama's playing with a little uh, pressure on them as opposed to playing loose and free up by double digits for most of the back half of this second second stanza great nice pass, pass. that's a that really kid? good play Eric Reed Jr. <laughs> off the assist from Murphy how about Murphy though just the instinct he has he can score that guy is an offensive guy can score it He's made three fantastic passes. Next. This is the run I was talking about. I thought they had two more, but this is now you got this one in you. Stop score. Crossover off the mismatch. Nice play on the rotation. Murphy got a piece of that shot from Miller. Great length with him. Reed high. Arching three is good. He's giving him a little pop off the bench. Number 11 in white. We talked about Tennessee. That's the next matchup at Tennessee is Mississippi State on the third in the new year. Happy New Year, by the way. Happy New Year to you, my friend. I think we've got a good one going down the stretch here. Must have stop. Patience here for Alabama. Seven to shoot. What recognition. Jaden Bradley with a kick out to Miller. Perfect spacing and recognition of who you want to take the shot. Yeah, that 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 was a crucial stop right there. Could have kept it a three possession game. Yeah, that yeah, that's a killer. A, that's a killer right there. And you do got to recognize if you are Mississippi State, you got Brandon Miller that wants to catch and shoot. He's got a lot in his toolbox, Brandon Miller, but yeah. he likes to catch and shoot now. And you got to take that away in that crucial moment. Bediaku with a tough make off some contact. That time away from D.J. Jeffries. 145 remaining, and just like that, it's back up to a 14-point lead when Mississippi State had a chance to get it to single digits. So some of the great things, Keyshawn Murphy, the, his emergence, we saw him get a lot of minutes here, play against a good, a, a really, I call him a great Alabama defense. I realize they gave a bunch of Gonzaga, but when this team locks down, it's a great defensive team. 
Cam Matthews felt like we saw him facilitate, get to the rim, finish. And also Alabama. Alabama did an absolutely superb job working on one of the best post players in the conference in Tolu Smith. They made life very, very miserable for him. One of seven from the floor. Only five total points, 11 below his average. And it's important for us to say what Mississippi State, nearly 50% of their points come in the paint. 32 out of 68 on average. Tonight they're sitting on 14. And credit Bama in their ability with their length to affect shots, block shots, foul. Yep. So you don't even get a shot. Head to the free throw line. And also, the initial one-on-one -on -one stop against Tolu Smith. Yeah. They were playing a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, as you pointed out, Pat. And that was enough to, to make him work really hard to turn into the lane where there were lots of hands for help. Great point. Betty Yako, 134 left. Not really a factor has fouled out. Look at the upcoming schedule. Um, Old Miss at home for Alabama. That's also on the third. That'll be right here on the SEC Network. Alabama ranked number eight. Mississippi State at 21 coming in. Six SEC teams ranked in the top 25. Smooth left-handed pass by Miller. <laughs> I mean, that's a crucial play because if that is errant now, Mississippi State's going the other way. And I, I realize at this point, 12 points, a little over a minute left. But just... Those types of plays is what helps Bama be a good end-of-game team. Oh, nice play by Sears. Lost his footing. It's going to be a little bit late. I mentioned six-rack teams. Coming into tonight, Tennessee was seven, Arkansas eight, Alabama nine, depending on the AP or the coaches poll. Kentucky 19, Auburn 20, Mississippi State 21. Sounds pretty good to me. That's pretty good represent. <laughs> Means that conference play is going to be awfully good. Tick, tickets available. I think they're still available. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday is going to be a lot of fun. Yep. That ball rattles in and out. And McNair Jr. able to put that back up and in. 45 seconds remaining. Alabama is going to improve to 11-2 and two on the year. So you have three-point guards. Brandon Miller, who is a guard. Yeah, he shoots it, but he's... Alabama fans who've made the short 90-minute drive over from Tuscaloosa as Sears knocks that one down on the night. Now 12 of 32 from three-point range. It was a battle to begin sure with. 34-30 at the half. Really enjoyed it, Pat. Happy New Year to you and your family and, and everybody watching across the SEC network and the ESPN app. And uh, Brandon Miller and the rest of the young stars for Nate Oates, along with a, a lot of the other players that have come back, particularly the likes of Javon Quinterly, and we, we wish him well on his continued recovery. This is a 